What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're showing off a deck that I don't think I've ever shown off on the channel before and that is Cosmo. Now I feel like Cosmo is a very slept on and underappreciated deck in today's format. We just got Itali back to 3. We just got Skill Drain back to 3. This deck can do a lot of damage in today's format but if you guys do enjoy these deck profiles make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. I'm super excited to be bringing this deck to you guys. It's one of those decks that I remember hating when it first came out. It was one of those really, really annoying decks. And what's funny is it's still that annoying in today's format. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video. And with that, off to the deck profile. All right, so I'm actually really excited to be bringing you guys this deck profile. So to get things started off, we're starting off with triple Cosmo Dark Destroyer, as well as one Cosmo Dark Eclipser. I really do like playing the one Dark Eclipser. First thing, it has a kind of, kind of a little trap negate, which is kind of nice, comes up here and there. But the best part about it is that it's just another big ship that you can search, and it's very, very powerful in itself. Also, all the big ships have the same effect where they can't be targeted by card effects. So that's your Dark Eclipser, your Dark Destroyers, as well as your Forerunner. So I do like to play one Forerunner here as well. This one is more just of a big body. But the nice thing about this card is in realistic situations, if you're going into time, you can just summon this card and then gain a thousand life points on your next standby phase, and you can try to win the game from that. But also, this card is really important because, of course, when it's destroyed you can banish it from your graveyard and then you can summon your dark destroyer or your dark eclipser so i do like the forerunner in that sense then we're playing two slip rider this is just mostly just back row removal one dark lady which is just a monster negate for you this card's pretty good as well and then for the baby cosmos or i guess the smaller cosmos we're playing one farm girl one storm trooper double straw man as well as triple tin can tin can of course is the most important one so you want to play three of and then these ones we're just playing one of each just so that we can get these big bodies on the board essentially. Tin Can of course is the one that you want to play the most of. In your end phase you can reveal three different Cosmo cards and then you're going to get one of them obviously to your hand. So if you don't see any of your Dark Destroyers you can obviously search one of these. You can also reveal your smaller ships. You can reveal a Dark Lady, a uh, Slip Ride or something like that because this way you have some more of disruption on your opponent's turn. So of course Tin Can is very very powerful. Then for the monsters we're just going to round it up with the Dasher and the Celestial. We are playing the DPE package. The DPE package works really really well in this deck because if you pop any of your big ships they're going to get their effects off to summon more ships essentially right so that's why it's really really powerful to play the dpe engine moving on to the spell cards we are playing triple extravagance and this i'm not going to lie to you this is a very fun deck and it's very very powerful but it is kind of expensive and the reason for that is because dpe is kind of important in this deck and you have to be playing triple dpe in the extra deck i know i'm kind of getting ahead of myself talking about the extra deck here but i just do want to say like this deck can get expensive. Now, the other way you can play it is you can play one DPE, but then play triple prosperity, but then prosperities are also kind of expensive as well. So it, it, it is kind of an expensive deck. I hate to say it, literally outside of this and like the triple DPE, the deck is actually very, very affordable, especially with Skill Drain getting another reprint in the Hidden Arsenal set. But uh, yeah, this deck can get a little bit expensive because of triple DPE. You could just play one DPE and just hope you never banish it, but I don't know, that's really up to you. But yeah, anyways, back to the deck profile where I'm playing triple extravagance the reason i also like extravagance over prosperity is because getting two cards is just sometimes a little bit stronger especially when you're playing so many traps if you draw into two traps you're in such a good position so that's why i like extravagance here instead of course two fusion destiny one terraforming for your cosmo towns and then triple e telly this deck is really just viable because we have e telly back at three because every single turn it means you can see your tin can every single turn you can see your farm girl your uh, your storm troopers it doesn't really matter and the best part about this e telly is also it helps you otk because if you already have a baby but let's say you have two ships in your hand what you can do is you can e tellies to summon another baby and then get two ships on the side of the field and that helps you otk so e telly just has a lot of functionality in this deck so of course triple e teleport and again like i said earlier three cosmo town this card is insanely powerful powerful people sleep on how good this card was because i remember when cosmo was meta back in the day when it first came out people really wanted cosmo town to go because this card is actually so insanely broken so first of all you can target any of your banished cosmo monsters and return it to your hand so it really gives you unlimited access to your resources but on top of that it literally lets you mulligan your hand to get a better hand you can reveal cosmo monsters from your hand put them back into your deck shuffle your deck up and draw cards equal to the amount of cosmo cards you shuffle back so it literally lets you mulligan your hand which is so powerful because if you draw a hand of like four big ships and a cosmo town you literally just mulligan your four ships which is very very powerful so that's why of course cosmo town is such a great card then for the trap cards we're playing triple back to the front this card is really insanely powerful because you just summon a monster back from your graveyard which is very strong because especially with something like your tin can where you reveal three different cards you can reveal for example three big ships one of them is going to get added to your hand but then the rest go to the graveyard so if you're sending a dark eclipse and a dark destroyer to your graveyard and then flipping it back to the front it can really help you push for otk on your turn three that's where this deck is really really powerful actually it's really really powerful on your turn three 
because after you turn one, you set up a little like board. Your opponent is gonna have kind of a hard time playing through it. You're gonna have a, like either a negate or you're gonna have some kind of disruption. And then when it comes back to your turn on your turn three, you can really go and push for game stuff like your Cosmo Farm Girl with your Dark Destroyer combos with your E Tellies. Like it's really easy to push for game in turn three. So back to the front is really important in that sense as well. Then we're playing two Dogmatica Punishment. Punishment is a really powerful card. Of course, you don't really go into your extra deck at all with this deck. So as you guys can see, the extra deck is just all punishment targets for the most part. But of course, Entis is probably your main one that you're going to go into. But because you never really go into your extra deck outside of your DPE, really, Punishment is a very powerful card in this deck. Triple Cosmojo. Cosmojo is just an insanely powerful card. You pop a Cosmo card you control. And so if you pop your big ships, they can banish themselves to some more big ships. But on top of that, you get to banish a card your opponent controls or in their graveyard. So this is really good against Eldritch matchups where they have their Golden Lords in their graveyard always. They, it's really good against just any matchups because banishing cards is very, very powerful. Then, of course, we're playing Skill Drain because if all else fails, you have big ships on your side of the field. They don't need their effects. Also, their effects really activate in the graveyard more than anything anyways. But you have your big ships on the field and now the Yu-Gi-Oh becomes, hey, I have bigger monsters than you do and you don't have an effects. So who's going to win at that? point so really skill drain is just an added bonus because this recent ban list giving us Itali and skill drain back just made this deck insanely insanely strong in my opinion because now you have multiple win conditions one skill drain can obviously be a win condition with your big bodies two Itali can be a win con for you because of course you can help you push for game in otk three you have your dpe which is another kind of helpful win con so so many different packages that help you just win games and then triple solemn strike solemn strike is just one of the best trap cards in the game if not the best trap card in the game so you have to be playing this card of course so yeah triple solemn strike here then for the extra deck here we're playing triple dpe now of course again this is like where i said the deck kind of gets a little bit expensive because you have to have triple dpe of course you don't have to play triple dpe but it's just most optimal because you are playing extravagance and really dpe is the only card you're going to go into with this deck you guys can try playing one maybe play two just hope you don't banish it essentially right it becomes a game of luck essentially at that point point. and then you're playing one fossil warrior skull knight these are all cards that you just send off punishment skull knight's really good because if he's in your graveyard you can banish it to destroy a card on the field you can play triple entis entis pops cards omega helps you recycle stuff you have your adding this which is another form of disruption you have your dark charmers and your linas now this you can kind of go into once in a while because you are playing dark and light monsters essentially and if you go into dark and you go into lina sometimes it could be really good these are kind of like anti-meta cards because it can be really good into some meta matchups and then of course you're playing one Fairy because this is just another punishment target and it helps you kind of fix your hand sometimes. So yeah, if all else fails, you can send a Fairy G and kind of fix your hand in that sense. You never really use this for the most part because your Cosmo Town kind of fixes your hands, but there are situations where if you have like multiple Cosmo Towns or multiple like brick cards in your hand, you can send your Fairy G, pop a card your opponent controls, which is kind of nice. But then on top of that, the Fairy G effect is going to activate and you're going to get to kind of fix your hand, right? So yeah, that's it really for the deck. The deck I think is very simplistic with the way it's played. It's really just caveman Yu-Gi-Oh if I say so. So myself because you're summoning the babies you're going to try to summon your big ships off the babies and then you're just going to try to otk your opponent if all else fails you have your skill drain like i said you have your punishments you have your cosmojos this deck has a lot of disruption funny enough for monsters that don't have a lot of effect negation because really outside of your dark lady you don't really have disruption in this deck you have no negation so that's why you kind of really are reliant on your trap cards but your trap cards themselves actually can do a whole lot of damage. And then, like I said, in turn three, this is where the deck does the most damage because once you go first, your opponent goes second, you come, the turn comes back to you. You can push for OTK, you can set up big boards. There's so many things this deck can do, and I think it's very, very powerful. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I do want to say that Cosmo, I think, is a very slept on deck. I feel like it's very underrepresented. And yes, I can understand where three DPE and stuff kind of gets expensive, but, but, if you do have the means to put this together, at least online, try it out. I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun with it. But if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. That's really all I got to say. And with that, thank you. Signing out. Peace.